after spending 30 days in the spirit realm, I want you to meet a man who can now switch on the ability to see into the invisible world. Learn how he uses this gift for emotional and physical healing and how he teaches others to turn on this gift. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Jonathan Welton, and I am so intrigued with people that can see so clearly into the invisible world. But you know what I'm even more intrigued with? If they can help you see clearly into the invisible world. My guest, Jonathan Welton, uh, wasn't supposed to be here. His family was complete, but his mother, during a worship service, the Spirit of God speaks to her, and what was she told? Well, my parents had had two children already, a girl and a boy, and uh, there was about five years difference between my, my older sibling and myself. They had finished up having kids, and the Holy Spirit surrounded her, and she heard in her heart, the Lord was asking her, does she want to have another child? He has someone who wants to be born at this specific time for a specific purpose, and that she could choose either to have me or not have me, and if she chose not to, he would have someone else who would have me, but that he was going to have me born at this specific time. God has a specific purpose for you. You are not an accident. <laughs> You're not a coincidence. God has something so special for you. Keep listening, because Jonathan Welton has got insight into a gift of the Spirit called discerning of spirits that very few people understand, and everyone is supposed to understand. As a matter of fact, when you were 19, you're minding your own business, you go to a meeting where there's a prophet, and he singles you out. What happened? Well, he, he asked me to stand up, and he begins to speak a word of prophecy over me. He says, uh, Jonathan, the Lord's going to give you the gift of discerning of spirits. He's called you as a seer, which I didn't know what that was at the time. And he said, you're going to begin to discern spirits more than you ever wanted to, which at that point I had never wanted to. Of so course. anything would have been impressive. <laughs> yeah. So uh, instantly I had this, this impartation where I received this prophetic word, and it, it started to happen. I started to see things What in was the, the first thing you remember seeing? I remember seeing uh, a bookshelf that was in my house and seeing fire on it. And as I went over to it, the Lord told me uh, there were specific books on there that I needed to read. And so I began to pull them down and they were from different leaders that uh, taught on the prophetic, taught on discerning mm -hmm. spirits. And the Lord was guiding me into uh, the books that I needed to grow and learn in this gift at that time. What is discerning of spirits? Well, discerning of spirits is one of the nine gifts listed in 1 Corinthians 12, and it's actually uh, uh, been a gift that's been given a bad reputation. Um, it's not just discerning darkness, but it's discerning the presence of the Holy Spirit, the uh, heavenly spirits, angels, uh, the human spirit. We all have a spirit, Sid, so I can discern your spirit. I can discern uh, people's spirits in stores or on the street and then there's demonic. So there's four types of spirits. Does every believer that's filled with the Holy Spirit, do they have this potential to move in this direction and can it grow? Definitely. It's, um, there are some who are called as seers, some who are called with the gift of discerning of spirits. Well, what is a seer? A seer is a high level, uh, a prophetic individual who operates in a high level of discerning of spirits. Okay, let's go to this 30 days. Tell me the types yeah. of things you saw during this 30 day period. Definitely. Hearing. Well, after he prophesied over me, there was like a window of time that opened up for 30 days where I was overwhelmed. I was seeing stuff all the time. And uh, I'd walk down the street and I'd see uh, serpents wrapped around certain buildings or demonic beings on top of certain buildings. And you probably, you were seeing things and probably didn't really understand what you were seeing. I, as much as I could, I stayed home. I was so overwhelmed. I, I, were you afraid? I was not enjoying this experience, definitely. Hmm. Yes, it was quite, it was quite overwhelming, quite scary. Um, 
and and uh, if I went to a store, I'd see objects stuck in people at times, swords, spears, arrows, and I didn't understand what I was seeing. So uh, I kept reading, asking the Lord, what what is it that I'm encountering here? I'd go to services where there was worship going on, and if the worship got cut off, like if the speaker comes up to share, and the worship got cut off at a time when it shouldn't have, I would see angels crying. Really? I, you know, that happens a lot. It I does. mean, I haven't seen the angels cry, but yeah. it, 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 I know when the things are, uh, you know, it just, it's just we got too much to do. Definitely, definitely. And, and so... Uh, I mean, could you tell by just walking down the street if someone was a believer or not? Yes, that was one of the most clear things, is that there would be a radiant light that shined uh, behind a believer. It was like it shined out in all directions. Hmm. And you could tell who a believer was because they carried the glory of God. And you could tell uh, who a non-believer was because there was like a veil of darkness around them. It says in Corinthians that the, the God of this age has veiled the eyes of the unbeliever. There's literally a veil that surrounds an unbeliever. And so when I look at, at an individual on the street, um, if they're a believer who is being oppressed by depression or sickness, uh, sometimes I'd see a cloud of darkness around them that was oppressing the light shining out of them. And sometimes uh, I'd see body parts hanging in the air, and the Lord would say they need that body part put into them. But then, as quickly as the gift came, it lifted. Oh, you must have really been concerned when it lifted. <laughs> I thought maybe I had done something horrible. I yeah. said, Lord, what, what exactly uh, was that all about? Why 30 days and then it start, it's stopping now? And uh, the Lord showed me very clearly. He said, um, in those 30 days, I turned the gift on full blast so that you would experience the full potential of this gift. And now I'm going to turn the gift off because the Lord wanted to teach me how to stir it up, how to activate it, how to turn it on and turn it off. Because we're not supposed to have it on all the time. Why? Well, it says in Revelation 1 that in, uh, John was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. That means he wasn't in the Spirit all the time. So there are times that we should move into the Spirit, and then there's times when you and I just have lunch. and So I don't have to be afraid of you when we have lunch and say, what is he saying coming out of it? That's right, and people have that perspective sometimes. <laughs> Which I don't, by yes. the way. I'm just teasing. Um, but I, 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 want, I want to find out about, the, about people that have these spears, uh, and when you pull them out, how the, the healing comes. But the fact that he knows how to turn it on, and turn the gift off, and he can mentor you. There, there are, to my knowledge, there's never been a book, and he has exercises in this book to activate and help develop the gift that's already in you. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Jonathan Welton, and Jonathan had the most miraculous thing happen. A prophet said that he was a seer, that means he can see into the invisible world, and that uh, for 30 days his eyes were opened, and he could see, he could tell if someone was a believer, if they were a non-believer, he would see words. What type of words might you see over a person? Well, I saw a lot of words that might say depression, unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, fear, things that now, usually when you that say were negative. You, when you see the words, is it like uh, just the words? Is it like a, a, a chalkboard? or what, what, what do you really see? Um, well, sometimes it would be written on, a, on an object that was stuck in a person. Uh, you might see a, you know, we use the phrase, and someone's been uh, stabbed in the back. Yes. And so there might be the word rejection written on this sword stuck in someone's back. Tell me about the woman that had these eight-foot swords, spears in her. Yeah, yeah, this was, this was wild. I'd seen a lot of things, but the Lord started to teach me that these objects had to do with physical healings. And uh, one of the key verses was Proverbs 12:18. It says that reckless words pierce like a sword. Hmm. And so... Uh, and the tongue of the wise brings healing. So I said, Lord, give me the tongue of the wise. I had this lady come and she sat down in a chair 
at one of my meetings where I was praying for healing and uh, she looked like a pin cushion. She had spears in the spirit uh, that were sticking out in every direction, about eight to ten feet. And on each spear it had a word, it had fear, it had rejection, unforgiveness, bitterness. And I, as I got close to her, I said, as I always do, can I lay hands on you to pray? And this is the first and only time she said, uh, no, please don't, uh, because it physically hurt if you touched her. And I said, well, uh, can I tell you what I'm seeing? And I described it to her. And she said, well, that makes sense because I'm on all these medications for fibromyalgia, uh, chronic fatigue, Epstein-Barr virus, and uh, social anxiety disorders as well. So when someone gets within the eight to 10 feet range of her, her body, she feels it. She feels and, and it you stir could, up. So it, it's almost like you were seeing in the spirit what was reflecting in the physical. Exactly. That's the best way to say it. And so I, I said, well, honey, let me pray for you and let's, uh, let's remove these spheres. And so we began to pray through prayers of forgiveness and releasing those people who had hurt her. And uh, we prayed for about an hour and a half. By the time we were done, she got up, gave me a great big hug. And uh, she's been uh, confirmed now from the doctors as well, being completely healed. Now, now, why did you do this praying? Why couldn't you just reach over and just pull each spear out? Well, that's a great question because some people have done that, but it, the wound is still there. If you pull out the object, but you haven't dealt with the wound it caused, then the person is just in the spirit. They're just bleeding and wounded. And you went to Brazil. And I can just picture this, and he was introduced to a worship leader, uh, this is, uh, Davi Silva, and, um, uh, and this worship leader prayed over you. What happened? Well, Davi openly sees in the spirit, and so I wanted to have and, him pray and, and for me. And by the way, yeah. he had a marvelous encounter with the yes. Lord in a healing. Tell me just briefly about yeah, that. Yeah, uh, Davi Silva was born with Down syndrome. At seven years old, he saw Jesus walk into his bedroom, reach out and touch him, and uh, his mind was completely healed. And so he's now in his mid-40s. He's one of the main worship leaders in Brazil, and he still looks like he has Down syndrome, but his mind is completely healed. What, so, what do the doctors say about this? Well, they have a convention each year, and he's been invited several times. He's had uh, chances to be studied, to be examined, to uh, share his testimony of what happened. And uh, he's had about 60 doctors accept the Jesus who came and touched him as their personal Lord as well. Because there, there's no other explanation. A testimony like that is just incredible. Okay. Uh, so he prays for you yes. for an impartation of what happens. Well, so he prays a very simple prayer, Lord, give him what I have that I, he would see more in the spirit, and he goes to start worship. Well, I'm standing uh, near the front row, and I see two 15-foot angels on the stage like I'd never seen before. They were actually surrounded by fire that came out of them about six feet. So they're 15 feet tall, they have six feet of fire around them. And I'm not thinking, oh, this is wonderful. I'm thinking, I'm scared out of my mind. I need to get away from this. But in that moment where I'm thinking to run, I see the angel closest to me uh, start walking towards me. He puts his hand out and he touches my chest. And I hit the floor, curled up in a ball. I feel this fire cover my body. I'm laying there. Uh, making a pool of sweat. I have my nice clothes on. I'm in Brazil on a cement 